So David Yarrow is one of the world's best known wildlife photographers. He's traveled across the globe to capture endangered animals and remote parts of our planet that very few people get to visit. So today he's, he's here at the jam. David Yarrow, thank you so much Not for coming all. and Good waking up here. early. Thank you very much for getting me up early. I'm, I'm impressed <laughs> that you made it because you're kind of, you strike me as a late night guy. <laughs> I've had my moments, but I'm in the, uh, in the spring of the autumn of my life, so it's time to get about a bit earlier, I think, now. So. All right, well, we're glad you're here. Um, and you have an exhibit in Chicago, which we're going to get to, but first I want to get to know the man behind the lens. Um, so first up, you started your career in college, and you had this iconic photo that kind of really set your career up. It was uh, during the World Cup in Mexico in 1986, uh, Argentina's World Cup, Diego Maradona's World Cup. And I was on the pitch of the final. The thing was, before the final, I hadn't taken a decent picture. But luckily, at the end, when Argentina won, I got very close to Maradona, and I got the picture of him with the cup in his hands, and very close, like I am to you. And there was a kind of biblicality to it, because you had the whole stadium in. So there was context. And it was just, I was lucky. It was the only good picture I took in the whole of the World Cup in Mexico. I don't believe it, luck. I think it's talent. But then you went from sports to wildlife. And one of your signatures is getting really close to your subjects, um, like eyesight. Yeah. And so I was thinking that the lens, it goes both ways. When you are so close to these animals and you're staring at them dead in the eyes, what are you feeling? I think you have to be close. If you're going to photograph a, a beautiful woman, you'd photograph her from two foot away. So why would you do any different from a lion or an elephant or a tiger? Um, I think you get the majesty of the animal, the intelligence of the animal. Eyes tell you everything. Even my eyes this morning tell you I've got <laughs> I'm not much sleep. But you've got to be close to those eyes. And eyes tell you much more about a human than anything else. Mm -hmm. Kindness, toughness, generosity. And it's the same with an animal. So the closer you are, the more uh, immersive you can be and the more close you can get to their in, in, their character, their personality. It really is your signature. We have one right behind us um, with one of your favorite animals, the elephant. Yep, yeah, the elephants are they're majestic. I mean, we do live on the same planet as these extraordinary intelligent animals and uh, uh, yeah, you learn an awful lot from that. I've just been with some of the biggest elephants in the world and they're mostly my age, kind of late 40s, early 50s, but they're much more intelligent than humans. And you've traveled to obscure places, you've photographed nearly every animal. You must have had a really scary moment. Um, well, I, I've just been in North Korea. That actually wasn't scary at all. And I think that people do, however, tend to be more scary than animals because <laughs> people can do three things that animals can't do. They can get drunk, they can get high, and they can buy an AK-47. And animals can't do any of those three things. So my, the, my toughest moments have probably been with tribal communities, uh, parts of Africa where they're a little bit too much uh, guns and a little bit too much marijuana and a bit too much alcohol. Those, those, are the, those are the scary moments. Animals are generally quite easy to deal with. I saw you photographed a cattle camp. That was one of my favorite. Actually, wow, that's right here. It was one of my favorite shots. That's in the South Sudan. That's the, that's the Dinka. And uh, they are the tallest people in the world. Uh, I was the first guy photographer up there for about seven years. Um, it was great to get there, and it was great to leave as well, in one piece. Yeah, tallest people. I wonder if they're taller than Jordan. He's 6'8". Well, I don't think so, <laughs> other than him. Other than him. Um, and you brought some work along from your exhibit. This is one of my favorite photos, but definitely a well-known one. Um, tell me about this one. Well, I was in a cage, so quite often the way I operate is the opposite of a zoo. In a zoo, the animals are in the cage and people are looking from the outside of the cage. In Africa, I tend to be in the cage because it's their home and the animals are outside the cage. And that, the, the cage allows you to, to play the proximity riddle, get close to the animal. And on this occasion, I had a guy in the cage with me so that when the lion came towards the cage, they could close the door with a rope. Uh, you, you couldn't mess that up because obviously if the rope broke, we'd both be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> but it allows me to have a ground up perspective on this most majestic uh, line. And we called it Old Testament because it could have been taken two million years ago, that yeah. picture. Majestic is the right word for it. Thank you so much Not for visiting all. us today, David. I appreciate it. And you guys can go to the exhibit in Chicago. The collection is at Hilton Asmus Contemporary at 716 North Wells through January 12th. Hilton-Asmus.com is where you can find all of the information.